She was affectionately known as the Queen of Saratoga, Mary Lou Whitney, a horse racing industry icon, socialite, and philanthropist, died today at age 93. Catherine Collins begins our LEX 18 Big Story team coverage of Mary Lou Whitney's life, legacy, and impact on Kentucky. A woman who can't be described with just one word. She was glamorous and beautiful and upbeat and charming and uh, just a dynamic woman. She was a legend. She stayed out late, even into her 80s. She was just a dynamo. Today at 93 years old, Mary Lou Whitney, the queen of Saratoga, has died. Her friends say she was constantly busy with one of her many passions. Terrence Collier of Basic Tipton, a Lexington Thoroughbred Auction Company, says she broke barriers as a woman in the racing industry. It will never be erased from the thoroughbred record books. Whitney, a socialite, was known for throwing parties at her homes in Lexington and Saratoga. Longtime friend Sue Wiley says her extravagant lifestyle could be intimidating until you met her. I expected this rather snobbish society woman, but she was adorable, giggly and funny and uh, just cute. Wiley says her friend accomplished everything she put her mind to. I think she would have been very satisfied with her life. I remember one time in an interview I did with her uh, saying, you know, what would you say to y other young women who were starting out uh, and have no idea what lies ahead in their lives? She said, I would say, hit your wagon to a star, aim for the stars, and you just might make it. She says you can't think of Mary Lou Whitney without smiling. In Lexington, Katherine Collins, LEX 18 News. Mary Lou Whitney was not only a socialite and a leader in the thoroughbred industry, but she was also a legendary philanthropist. And as LEX 18's Jacqueline Nye continues our remembrance, we'll be forever reminded that she changed Lexington for the better. Flashback to May 2006. Two weeks after having back surgery, Mary Lou Whitney suffered a stroke and was receiving treatment at the Cardinal Hill Hospital. And a year later, Whitney donated $500,000 to the hospital in appreciation for helping her recover. Whitney's husband, John Hendrickson, described Cardinal Hill Hospital as having one of the nation's top stroke therapy units which is now named the Mary Lou Whitney Stroke Center. Mary Lou and John also gave to another Lexington hospital, $2.5 million to the University of Kentucky Hospital for the Mary Lou Whitney and John Henderson Cancer Center for Women. And that amount was matched by the state. Mary Lou Whitney, along with her late brother-in-law, George Headley, continued to keep the arts in Lexington alive with a museum that sits on Headley's family farm. The Headley Whitney Museum of Art has replicas of Mary Lou's homes in Lexington and Saratoga. The museum also features a handmade shell grotto fashioned by George and Mary Lou and a garden filled with Mary Lou's favorite roses. Mary Lou Whitney, as she did in life, will continue to change the lives of thousands of Kentuckians forever. In Lexington, Jacqueline Nye, LEX 18 News. And of course, we'll keep you posted on air and online about the arrangements for Mary Lou Whitney. If you are outside at all, you know it was a hot and humid day today. Temperatures soared into the low 90s this afternoon, including the 93 in Lexington, 95 in Frankfurt, a whole bunch of 93s around Flemingsburg, Monticello, Danville, all at that mark. Even on the top of the hill there at Jackson, it was 91 this afternoon. When we're looking at tomorrow, we're talking about another day of heat. In fact, today was our 17th day of temperatures 90 or above. We averaged for a year 22. Well, tomorrow will be day number 18 as temperatures go into the mid 90s tomorrow. May even try and push triple digits as you head toward the urban heat island there over in Louisville. Yeah, another hot day and not only hot, it's going to be humid. So your heat index numbers, they soar back up into the low 100s in the 102, 103, 104, maybe 105 range by the time we're all done tomorrow afternoon. So a little bit more than what we had this afternoon. And for that reason, there are heat warnings, heat advisories. They continue through tomorrow into Sunday. Again, as we've talked about in practicality, very little difference between the two. It's just going to be a hot day that you have to contend with. And even here at 11 o'clock, 
We're at 81 degrees in Lexington, 82 in Richmond, 80 in London. That is very hot. If you're headed out to the Barbasol tomorrow, first tea time temperature will be somewhere around 80. We'll top out in the mid 90s at heat index over 103. Hydrate and sunscreen. We'll talk more about the end of this heat wave in a couple minutes. All right, Bill, thanks. Well, the high school football season is right around the corner and players are back on the field getting their reps in. But this week, their fiercest opponent is the heat. Ryan Station's seven on seven scrimmage against Bourbon County today was without pads or equipment, just helmets, and trainers issued mandatory breaks every 15 minutes. Yes. Well, we're here just in case someone needs to get hurt, just like a lifeguard would have to jump into the water. We'd have to run onto the field to make sure that, you know, with the injuries taken care of and, and any type of emergency is taken care of. Them. 80 gallons of water were on site for today's scrimmage to make sure players were hydrated. When the temperature reaches 99 degrees, players aren't allowed to practice with equipment or helmets. Due to the heat, Lexington officials have activated the emergency summer weather plan. They're calling this a phase three heat alert. That means more cooling centers will be open throughout the city. Lexington Parks and Recreation will offer half-price pool admission, and Lextran will offer free rides to shelters and cooling centers. The Hope Center and the Hope Mobile will also be offering free water, sunscreen, and other supplies. For more information about all of that, you can call 211 or head to our website. You can check the temperature of the forecast before you go out at lex18.com. We'll get that same information for your smartphone. The LEX 18 News app is free in your app store. In other news this evening, lawmakers are back in Frankfurt for a special session to work on fixing the ballooning pension costs for some Kentucky groups. But the solution is where they differ. When lawmakers gaveled in today, they had the ability to move forward on several pension proposals. One of them is Governor Matt Bevin's bill. The other two are proposals from the Democrats. All three were moved into committee. Tomorrow, lawmakers will be back in Frankfurt as the special session continues. And for every day they're in Frankfurt, it's costing taxpayers $66,000. Round two of the Barbasol Championship is in the books. More about who made the cut to play through the weekend is still ahead. But being a Friday, there were even more fans on the course today. And one of the best parts of the event is that there's something for every age. Whether you're looking for a cold beverage, trying to get autographs, even collecting golf balls. Just sitting, we wait for them to finish, we go down there, we ask them to give us an autograph, and they give us an autograph. It's been a pretty good week, huh? Yes. I've been meeting a lot of um, famous golfers. Have they been giving you anything? Yeah. What have you received so far? About like 15 balls. <laughs> Tomorrow there will likely be an even bigger gallery, as it's family day at the golf course. And the players who made the cut will be vying for the top prize of $630,000. Of course, LEX 18 is the official television partner for the PGA event. And we'll have continuing exclusive coverage from the Barbasol Championship all weekend, right through the final round on Sunday. And remember, you can keep up with what's going on at the championship by logging on to LEX18.com. We'll also share behind-the-scenes looks from champions at Keen Trace on the LEX 18 Facebook page. But well, we're in the middle of a good old fashioned heat wave, but Bill is up next with news of a cool down in sight in your storm tracker forecast.
If you were watching our earlier coverage today from uh, the Barbasol Championship, yeah. you may have seen sportscaster Eli Gain, <laughs> who said that he was sweating so much it was rolling off his fingertips. He just picked up a bottle of water and poured it on his head, trying to stay cool. And I'll bet you he wasn't the only one who did something like that out there And today. I will also bet you he felt a heck of a lot better <laughs> after that. <laughs> yeah, it was certainly hot out there. And yeah. the thing is, today is not the hottest day. That will be tomorrow. Yeah. So headed out there, doing anything outside tomorrow, plan accordingly. Let's talk about it. It is going to start off really warm. In fact, mid 70s, we were at 75 this morning. We'll talk about that significance in a second. Uh, by the time we're at lunch, already pushing 90. And yeah, it's going to be plenty muggy out there. End of the day, we're in the mid 90s. You got the heat warning continuing. The heat index tomorrow will be 103 to 105 by the time we all wrap it up. So yeah, we are pushing that threshold. So what's been going on? It's obviously been hot. There are heat warnings that run all the way from Kansas and Nebraska through Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, up into Michigan, Ohio. Obviously, they include us and then all along the mid-Atlantic as well, from the Carolinas to New England, up to Boston. And you also have the heat advisories that are around as well. So again, there's plenty of, of advisory, plenty of notice that it's going to be a, a hot day. But with that, we're talking a heat index tomorrow, 100 to 105. So this will be the peak of the heat and it will start getting better. High temperatures for tomorrow. Let's add a degree or so to where we were today or a degree or two. So we're headed up to the mid 90s tomorrow. Humidity levels are going to stay about where they were. And so the end result with the heat index is we're going to see those temperatures running into the low and mid 100 range, uh, 100 to 105 or so. Interesting thing from the folks at the Midwest Regional Climate Center up at the University of Illinois, they've put together a table for a lot of stations throughout the Midwest and the Ohio Valley of the number of hours of heat index values at different thresholds. Well, we pl plucked out the 100 or above. We averaged 13 hours per year. This is going back to 1970 with the other uh, record keeping. So we averaged 13 hours a year of heat index values of 100 or better. And we're going to be adding that total tomorrow. You're talking dew point numbers. This is the amount of moisture in the air. When it's in the 70s, your body just has a hard time adapting to that amount of moisture. When you're getting into the upper 70s, we're talking not quite Amazonian, but we're thinking about the tropics there. So you see those numbers. The higher you get, the worse your body's able to deal with it. And when you factor in temperature numbers that are still even around 80, we could compute a heat index even at this hour. I mean, it's still in the 80s up the I-75 corridor. That is Awfully. It was 86 in Louisville. It's 81 right now at the Bluegrass Airport. Light south wind that low of 75 this morning ties a record high low temperature for the day. Last time was in 1977. But the heat wave, you know what, gang? It's July. It gets hot. Bottom line is you do the common sense things that we always talk about. You take it easy, you hydrate, you try and avoid the heat of the day if you can. Check on older folks in your area to make sure that they're okay. Make sure your pets have a warm or a cool place to come on into. For the Barbasol, we're sweating tomorrow, no doubt about that. We're sweating the storm possibilities on Sunday. Next week, we're going from the tropics of this weekend to a little September preview. As temperatures soar tomorrow and even stay hot on Sunday, but look at that. We're down into the low 80s as we head toward the uh, week, and we see temperatures staying in the 70s. That big high will keep the heat wave in place. The front is gradually dropping southward as the high loses control. But behind that front, that is the relief from the heat that you see, and it is coming. Thunderstorm chances increase later Sunday afternoon. If you're headed out to Lakeside Live tomorrow, temperatures will be in the low 90s. Boogie G and the Titanics will be out there starting at 7 o'clock. It's a very warm night. It's a steamy night. We're in the mid 70s, mid 90s. The heat warning continues tomorrow. The heat index up 105 at times. All right, Sunday thunderstorm chances later in the afternoon, especially in the evening. Monday thunderstorms are likely and that taste of September begins on Tuesday. All right, Bill, thanks. Also with the news this evening, a Clark County woman who was driving to work this morning and found a puppy that was left for dead in a cage on the side of the road. The puppy was found at the end of a driveway on Old Ruckerville Road. The Clark County Animal Shelter says the puppy looks to be about 10 to 14 weeks old, appears to have an ongoing skin condition and possibly parvo. The woman who found the puppy is just glad that puppy's now in the right hands. When I see that. So it was almost like a, a nightmare uh, walking up on this dog and seeing it was just like hair missing from the back legs and very, very um, thin, just skin and bones and blood all over it. 
There is an investigation to find the person who left that puppy. Meanwhile, the Clark County Animal Shelter is asking for help in taking care of the puppy's medical bills, and they've set up a GoFundMe page, which you can find on our website, lex18.com. One of the four men convicted in the shooting that killed a young Lexington track star, Trinity Gay, is facing more prison time, this time on a federal gun charge. Devante Middlebrooks was sentenced to 15 years on a wanton endangerment conviction for Gay's shooting in 2016. Police say while he was free awaiting trial, Middlebrooks was found with a gun leading to the federal gun charge, and Middlebrooks was sentenced to more than nine and a half years for that crime. Lexington police are looking for a man who harassed and groped a local fast food worker. They say this man caused the disturbance at a Wendy's on July 3rd, making unwanted sexual advances toward the employee. Officers say he was also caught on camera grabbing the employees behind. The victim snapped his picture as the man left the restaurant. He could be facing a sexual abuse charge. If you can identify that man, call Lexington Police at 258-3600 or submit a tip at lexidme.com. Iran says it seized a British oil tanker in the Strait of Hormuz, but another tanker has been released and it has sailed out of Iranian waters. Iran's message to Great Britain is next on LEX 18 News at 11. Coming to your world on LEX 18 News at 11, the British government announced today that Iran's Revolutionary Guard seized two ships in the Persian Gulf. Iran's news agency reported the second oil tanker detained by Iranian forces has been released and has left Iranian waters. 
Ali Aruzi has more from Tehran. Iran's Revolutionary Guard seized the tanker for not following international maritime regulations, according to their statement. The tanker was taken to a coastal area in Iran and turned over to the authorities to take the necessary legal steps. Now, apparently, according to the tanker's operator, it was guided into Iranian territory by IRGC gunboats and helicopters. The most senior leadership here has been warning of some sort of retaliation after an Iranian oil tanker was seized by the British in Gibraltar on July 4th. Now, the UK says that the Iranian tanker was illegally taking oil to Syria, something Iran denies. The incident made the authorities here furious. Iran's supreme leader weighed in immediately and said that Iran will not let this act of piracy by the evil English go unanswered. Now, Iran wants its super tanker back, and this is a clear message short of conflict. Ali Aruzi, NBC News, Tehran. And now here's Keith as we look toward round three of the Barbasol Championship. Now the Barbasol has cut its field in half. We'll show you the leaders and how many of our local connections